is looking for a young man to walk to a crippled person and tell him, are you ready to walk? He's not waiting for a guy to go to a mountain to ask for the anointing to make the lamb walk. No, he's waiting for you one day to walk to a blind eye and say you have to open. I dare anybody to choose this evening to believe God for something bigger than you. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says in Romans, the 14th chapter, the 9th verse, very powerful portion of scripture. It says, for to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if we are going to have a conversation about revival, or many of us in the simplest term, when we ask, what is revival? Simply, it means to be taken aback to that perfect place in reconciliation toward God as it is supposed to be, really, revived. All right? We cannot have a conversation of revival without understanding where exactly were we before we went off the course and then what God is really up to in trying to reconcile us back to where we are truly supposed to be. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says that that which was is and shall be because the spiritual realm or the prophetic moon is circular. That which was is shall be has been and that means if it's a circle in human history God has moved once again to give us an opportunity to see something and I believe in a greater glory because the spiral can go upward or downward but this time we believe that we're going to see something this time like human history has never seen before but we are even believing for bigger somebody shout hallelujah if in our generation a man has got to walk on water to be believed we shall walk on water. Yeah. But whatever it takes, we are ready to believe God. Shout glory to God. Now, listen. I, every time people used to say revival, 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 I always wanted to go back to scripture and try to connect this and understand it from the perspective of the New Testament. Because there are many things, even though are spoken, really change so much in form, interpretation, and application in the New Testament. For example, in the Old Testament, every male was circumcised the, uh, on the eighth day, I believe. See? But we don't do that now in the New Testament. Why? Because even now, better, we have the circumcision of the what? The heart. You see what I'm saying? So a lot changes. Well, it's easy to read about revival or understand revival from an Old Testament understanding or interpretation. But how would you define revival in the New Testament? So I said, okay, let me go through the New Testament and start to study. Literally, I went looking for wherever revival was written, wherever revival was written. And guess what? In the New Testament, I never saw a word called revival. I'm not saying it's wrong. And so I asked the Spirit, why is that word not in the New Testament? And this is what he told me. He took me to this scripture, Romans 14, verses 9. Now let me read it again for you to understand. He says, for to this end, listen, Christ both. Now, the word both there means he's talking about two elements. Huh? Two elements, both. You can't say both of you three boys come. That's not English, right? You have to say both, you mean two, right? Now, he says, Christ, for this, for, to this end, Christ both, listen, died and rose. Are you hearing? Now, that's done. And then he brings a third and says, and revived. Now, that has nothing to do with the two. Do we get it? But listen to to the language he revived 
he's not going to revive. He revived. Who understands what I'm saying? He revived that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. Let me explain what it means. Some of you have studied Hebrew that God does not speak in future tense. He speaks in present tense as though it's already done. He walked to Abraham and told him, I have made thee a father of many nations. The man was not yet a father physically. Scripture tells us that he did not have the ability to have children. Him and Sarah were full of age. She was what? 80? 90? And God appears to this man. He does not tell him, I will make you a father. He tells him, I have made you a father. Somebody shout hallelujah. And the Bible says, before whom he believed. Abraham believed. In the God who quickeneth the dead, the Bible says, and calleth the things that be not as though they are. So, what did Abraham believe? Abraham did not believe in the power to be made. Abraham believed in the power that he was made. Who understands what I'm saying? Abraham did not believe in the future to become he believed in the future that was and was present at that point from that moment even before Isaac came Abraham had believed God that he was a father to nations I have met thee I have met thee now that's the mystery of faith that the language of faith it does not throw the realities of truth in the future. No, that's chronos, the times of men, your watch moving. You understand what I'm saying? It's not kairos, the timings of God. Remember, he is the beginning and the end. He sees where you're going. He knows where you're moving. And he's not coming he's not shocked about what's going to happen no you're the one going to be shocked about what's going to happen but he's not shocked now if you're going to be a partner in this that God is doing your faith has to stop throwing the realities of truth to the future because many of us are preparing for revival there are many do you know why many people are not going to see revival they're, they're preparing for it. They are believing God for it. Who understands what I'm saying? Don't believe God for revival. He has revived. What God is helping you to connect to really in reality is what he has already done. And when the manifestation of what he has already done is here, then the world, we will call it revival. Not because it began when it manifested, but it began when we chose to believe that he had revived. Let me give you a small story. 2013, I'm sleeping. And in a vision of the night, Jesus appears to me. And then he told me, I have given you your nation. Not I will give you. He told me, I have given you Uganda. And from there, you're going to hit the whole world. North, east, west, south. The whole world will hear you. Are you hearing me? At that time, I was a banker. Started hard, graduated well as a good student, yeah, smart, and I went through my processes. So I was not looking for any attention in the church, I was not going to the church to survive. My numbers were good, I was performing. I was perhaps one of the youngest managers in the whole country. I grew up the ranks very quickly. So I was not entering the church as 
as the other option of finding a living. No, as making it well. Are you, are you following what I'm saying? But we had believed God for so much. And I remember in our university days, Oh, Rata Badiga. I, I wish a young man would understand me. In our university days, I remember when we first entered the university, we told these guys that from here, we're going to shake the whole world. Are you hearing me? We, we told them from here, we're going to shake the whole world. And so we had this fire burning in us, telling us all things were possible and that it was going to happen. How we don't know, but we believed that it was going to happen. So anyway, fast forward. You know, you're doing ministry, we go here and there, we do everything. But something remarkable happened. In 2013, when the Lord told me, I have given you, I have given you, I awoke to the reality of understanding what that meant. And it shook me so deeply that for long I had walked with God, but I'd never understood what it means to walk where he sees me how he sees life how he relates with us you see many people put the promises of God afar that is why somebody walked on this ground and they still think they're sick even though they have all the promises of God the Bible says some saw the promises afar and they received not the promises you see what I'm saying so there's somebody right now seeing the move of God in Arizona far perhaps you're looking at the numbers that are seated here and you're like huh I think we're fewer and I understand where you're coming from perhaps you're looking at the people around you perhaps you're looking at the the ministers that you've seen and and you've judged with your eyes and you're thinking hmm how 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 are they gonna do it where are they gonna get the money to do this how will it work? Oh yes, you know with God all things are possible. Notwithstanding, you do. But you see, you, you have a mountain of questions of how it's going to pan out. Because your present mind is not connected to where God is. And I remember, I told God, because I, I remember I read the scripture of Abraham believing God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. And I told God, let's go, let's go, let's go. And I said, I'm ready to, I have believed you. I have believed you. Listen, Pastor Jason, I never, from that day, I never prayed for the future. I learned to pray as one in the future. And I came back for the present world to remind it that I'm here. I'm not there. Who understands what I'm saying? I'm talking about that day you will wake up and there's no money in your pocket. And the scripture tells you that I've blessed you with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. I've given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. The fact that I have given, I have blessed, you start living so big. And that life is so crazy. It, it look, you, you will look so crazy when people observe you they will not understand you and that's okay that's a revived man because he's calling the things that be not as though they are he's living in the moment where God is he's living in the kairos the appointed things are reconciled because he's in the realm of faith and not the realm of sight do you understand what I'm saying and then I asked God give me a debt and then he gave me a debt and then I called a few guys and I told them, we're going to start the biggest ministry in this nation. Listen, and I told them, from this nation, we're going to touch the whole world. Now let me say this. The language of God says, I have done it already. The next days, months, weeks that are coming, we're just responding to what has already happened. That is how I know we cannot fail. That is how I know that this city must shake. And I tell you, north, east, west, south. Oh, they will hear. They will hear. Because I'm living proof that it works. 
The lame started walking, the blind started seeing, the deaf started hearing, tumors disappearing. Oh, 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 oh. glory to God. Because we chose to believe. We chose to believe. I'm not talking about things vitamin C can heal. I'm talking about things doctors have no answers for. Listen, if you understand this, there is no reality as deep as the experience of the new birth. There is nothing above it. For if any man be in Christ, is a new creation. All things are passed away and all things are become new. Next line. And all things are of God. All things are of God. His vision is of God. His meditation is of God. His thoughts, his actions, everything they do is of God. Now, this is a problem. It's a hard thing to give such a reality to a mind that is not yet reformed in the revelation. That is why the pendulum swings on two things. He wills that all men be saved and that they might come to the knowledge of the truth. Because we had many folk in church who were saved. They were born again Christians. But they've never come to the knowledge of the truth. They don't honestly know the truth. And we started having questions in the church that never had answers. And then we're inflated with the glories of philosophy. If our vocabulary is right, our semantics are good. Instead of demonstrating Christ, we are illustrating him to all the already callous and dull who cannot understand a simple abstract statement because in the inside they've not conceived the place of seeing God as he is. We have entered a time where when you say Holy Spirit, you say raise up your hand, receive the Holy Ghost and a man will start his lips will start rapa dapa kadiga pola diga. What is happening to me kadiba radigo sata la casa puri lege. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that, that is power. And here's the mystery that you were buried with him in baptism, wherein also you're raised with him through the faith of the operation of God who was raised him from the dead. So if you're raised with him, buried with him, raised with him. He both died and was raised and revived. It means you are not only the instrument, but the fruit of revival. Somebody shout hallelujah. But here's a problem that many are not able to see it. And that's the responsibility of the church to show it. Paul says, and to whom I'm least of all saints, was given unto me this grace to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. If I can just make you see that revival is here already. God is looking for a young man to walk to a crippled person and tell him, are you ready to walk? That's what God is waiting for. He's not waiting for a guy to go to a mountain to ask for the anointing to make the lamb walk. No, he's waiting for you one day to walk to a blind eye and say you have to open. And if it doesn't, you look for another. And Jesus said, I have come to cast a fire upon the earth. And how I wish that you were already kindled. That is so mind blowing. Jesus is giving a possibility somewhere in a parallel universe X where it was possible for him to come and find a kindled generation. And he's saying, I wish you knew how that would look like. That I'm not just coming to give them the Holy Ghost, but they already have it. And I'm coming to give them some bigger. Oh, I wish you understand it. It's one thing to receive it in the upper room and speak in tongues. It's another when you are tormented and persecuted and you go again in a, secu in a secluded place and start to seek God. And this time the place your heart starts shaking because he wants to give you a boldness. And he stretches out his hands through that to heal the sick and make the lame walk and open, and open blind eyes and the deaf. Listen, 
we are not looking for another philosophical sermon. We have had all kinds, Greek lexicons, Hebrews, has, they've been connected. I mean, we have preached them. But we're talking about that authority that will walk to a deaf, that will walk to a barren woman and tell her, you will receive child. A woman walked to me, she was 13 years in marriage, 13, one, three, and she told me I don't have children. And I told her, next year, this time, I will carry your child. And believe it, in one year, that time, I was holding her child. That is power. That is power. That is how we're going to change governments. For a man to wake up and say, this shall not, be, shall, shall not happen. And it cannot be because a certain individual declared it in their room. And God heard it. I said God had it. I said God had it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, I'm in the thought that what will happen if the son of man, or son of God, Jesus, finds a man who has believed it, who has embraced revival, and they believe that they are revived already by the realities that we have in the new creation. What would Jesus do with such a man who has believed it? This is the only problem. Not many people, even listening to me right now, are ready to believe it. Like one man said, they fear the consequences of that responsibility. Because men are gonna ask us, where is the God you say is here? And it's okay. I would rather live being questioned to prove that God than live in unbelief because I am to be politically correct. No, those days have come to an end. And let it be okay that you prayed and it did not work. But young people, at least stretch your hands and pray. Smith because what already said that I would rather die believing than living in doubt. And I said no. I changed it. I said, a man can't die believing. If it doesn't work, it ain't faith. Is it? A man cannot die in faith. Because with faith, nothing is impossible. Now, the Bible says in Haggai chapter 2, verses 5, last verse, last, last verse I'll read. He says, according to the word that I have covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, he's telling Israel, he says, my spirit still remaineth among you. And he tells us, fear not. And I believe this is the greatest news. That there's a lot of madness in the world. But isn't it so beautiful that the spirit of God the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is still here. The same that worked in Paul, the same that worked in Peter, he is here. That same spirit that worked through our Lord Jesus Christ is here. He has not left. He's still with us. When you open your mouth, you feel him. When you raise your hands, you feel him. Oh, when you start worshiping, you feel him. And God is saying, do not fear. I have not left the earth. Are you following what I'm saying? If the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, Paul says, truly abides in us, then the Bible says he will give life to our mortal bodies. Harris tell people, don't give up the hope to see God because the Holy Spirit is still here. He has not changed. He's still one with the Father and with the Son. He still performs miracles today like he did in the past. He still reveals and redeems and changes and transforms lives. He is still around. The problem is that many of us have not made the choice. Ladies and gentlemen, this
these are days where God is trying to awaken the world and I see what God is going to do in the world and every time I see it I feel like I want to pray Venero Ministries International invites you to a night of prayer this 31st December 2022 at the Kololo Independence Grounds from 5 p.m. EAT. God is going to build a prayer life on you and you understanding how the anointing works makes you a participator in what heaven is trying to do across the world. Build your momentum! Do not cross over alone. Bring 10 people along as we enter 2023 on the wings of prayer and worship to God. Expect miracles, signs, and wonders. Expect God. Venero, make manifest.